Vertical projectile motion. I have a question here that was actually requested by Alana. A soccer player juggles a ball on his head by letting the ball bounce continuously on his head. After the last bounce, the ball leaves his head and takes 1.84 seconds to reach the ground. So the first thing I'm going to do is a rough sketch. A rough sketch is really, really important because it helps you to visualize the situation and helps you to strategize and see how to answer. So we have this ball that leaves his head and reaches the ground. Now remember, he's bouncing the ball upwards, so the ball will reach a maximum velocity and then reach the ground. And they say that the ball reaches the ground with a velocity of 10 meters per second. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a direction positive. So remember our steps, it's always important to have a rough sketch and to choose a direction positive. So I'm taking downward motion as positive. So thus far, we do not know what his initial velocity of the ball was, but we know the final velocity was 10. And if I'm taking down as positive, then it reaches the ground with positive 10 meters per second. And acceleration due to gravity, because the ball is in free fall, will be 9,8 downwards. And we took down as positive, so it's positive 9,8. And the question says, after the last bounce, the ball reaches or takes 1.84 seconds to reach the ground. So, we know the time that it takes to reach the ground is 1.84 seconds. Delta T is 1.84. So now I'm going to look at my data sheet and choose an equation that has these four uh, units, so these four quantities, and I'm going to use Vf equals Vi plus A delta T. Final velocity is positive 10. The initial velocity we're looking for. Acceleration is positive 9,8 and the time is 1,84. So we put this into our calculator and we get... And our answer is negative 8,032 and the negative tells us that the motion was upwards because we took down positive. So it's very important to keep going back and checking. We took down positive, so that means the initial velocity was 8,032 meters per second upwards. Now the question asks, how tall is the player? So if I'm going to just, let me just delete all of this uh, to make some space for us to work. If we look back at our rough sketch, we can see that this boy throws the ball upwards or it bounces off his head and lands to the ground. And on the diagram, I'm marking it off in red that this is the height of the boy. You know, usually in vertical projectile motion, we find height of a building or height of a cliff, height of a tree. This time we've got to find the height of the boy. And the height of the boy is going to correspond to delta y, the displacement. So I'm now going to list information that I have. We know we are looking for delta y. Remember, we're taking down positive, so we stick to that throughout the question because we've chosen down positive. It's perfectly fine to take up positive. Usually, you have a choice in the exam unless the question is specific and tells you to use a particular direction. Then you have to follow the question's instructions. So we're looking for delta y. Acceleration is 9.8 down, and we took down positive, so it's positive 9.8. We know that the final velocity when it hits the ground is positive 10. We were given that. We know the time that it takes to hit the ground is 1,84. And we also calculated V initial in the previous question, and we calculated it as negative 8,032. Remember now, because in the previous question in 1.1, we calculated negative 8,032, we carry that value down as a negative. So it's very important to watch your signs when you are substituting because that's the one place where a lot of learners lose marks and um, it's very poorly answered generally by learners because learners don't take it seriously and they are not so specific and not so careful when they're substituting signs. So please be careful of that. Now we're going to choose an equation from the data sheet that's going to help us to find delta y. 
and I'm choosing delta y is equal to vi delta t plus half a delta t all squared. Delta y is what we're looking for. The v initial is negative 8, 0, 3, 2. Don't forget the negative. Delta t is 1, 8, 4 plus half into positive 9, 8 because remember we took down positive. Gravitational acceleration 9, 8 is always down. So this time it's positive 9, 8 and t squared 1, 8, 4 all squared and we put this into our calculator. And that gives us 1,81 meters. So the boy's height is 1.81 meters. So his height corresponds to the displacement of the ball, just like how in previous questions we find the height of a building and so on. Remember, the equation takes into account displacement, so it cancels out that distance above his head that the ball travels and the distance back to his head on the way down and it just calculates the displacement which is a straight line from start to end. The next question says calculate the maximum height the ball reaches above the ground. So in order to do this we first need to find the maximum height reached by the ball above his head. So if I go to the diagram in red we are trying to find the maximum height reached by the ball above his head. So I'm going to say from start to maximum height. So I'm indicating to the marker that I'm working from the start to maximum height. I'm just going to draw this again on the right. So if I follow the ball here and I call this point A where the ball starts, it will reach a maximum height and then fall to the ground. So I am basically working from A to B if I label this in red. Okay, so from A to B, I know that his initial velocity was negative 8,032. We worked this out earlier. And we know his final velocity or the ball's final velocity at B is zero because at maximum height, velocity is always zero. So this was one of the key concepts when we do vertical projectile motion, that at maximum height, the velocity is zero. And the acceleration is still 9.8 down. Remember, we took down positive. We're going to stick to the sign convention throughout the question. So acceleration is 9.8 down, and we want delta y. So this time on the data sheet, we're choosing vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta y. 0 squared is negative 8.032 squared plus 2 into 9,8 into delta y and delta y is what we're looking for and we put this into our calculator and solve and we get negative 3,29 meters remember we took down positive so the negative indicates upwards so this is 3,29 meters above his head but the question says calculate maximum height above the ground so we want this entire height in green so to get the final height above the ground we'll take the maximum height reached by the ball above the boy's head which was 3,29 plus the height of the boy which we calculated in the previous question and that was 1,81 and when we put this into our calculator and add it, we get an answer of 5,10 meters. So that is the height reached by the ball. So very important always to use a rough sketch. You will notice I keep referring to the rough sketch. It's the rough sketch that's very, very helpful. It shows me exactly what I'm working with. We are indicating in red to the marker that we're working from start to maximum height. So one of the places where learners get confused in vertical projectile is the rough sketch is usually ignored by many learners. So learners cannot see the situation clearly and learners don't take direction. They just substitute and that's where you can go wrong. So the next question asks us to sketch the position time graph, the velocity time graph and the acceleration time graph for this ball. 
So before we sketch the graph, I just want to talk about a few important things. The first thing I did was I redid the rough sketch. Here's the ball, here's the ball in purple. The ball leaves his head with a velocity of negative 8,032. Remember, we calculated it as negative. Then the ball reaches maximum height and the velocity is zero. And the ball falls to the ground with a velocity of 10. Remember, we took down positive. We are sticking to the same sign convention. Also, we calculated that the ball travels upwards to a maximum height of 3,29 and the ball's height is 1,81. So when we want to draw the position time graph, the first thing we do is we put in our labeled axes with units. So I've got position in meters on the y-axis and time in seconds on the x-axis. Remember to label your graphs with units. There's a mark given there. And now I'm going to start. Uh, remember, so the ball starts around 1,81 meters high. Why does that happen? Because it starts on top of the boy's head and the ball travels 3,29 meters above the boy's head. So 1,81 plus 3,29 is 5,1. So the ball reaches a height of 5,1. And then the ball falls back to the ground and this happens after 1,84 seconds. So they didn't ask us to calculate the time that it took for the ball to reach maximum height or anything like that. So we don't need to work out any other values. We only put in values that they asked us to calculate and values that they gave us. So we knew that we had to calculate his height and that's where it started from, 1,81 meters. So we get a mark for that, a mark for showing where 5,1, that was the maximum height. And it reaches the ground after 1,84 seconds. You will notice the shape of the graph when we have a position time graph. The shape is always like a parabola type of shape. It is a curved shape and that's one of the things we look for when we are marking. We also look to see if you've labeled your axes with units and we also look to see if you have plotted your points correctly. So the important key points, which in this case were the three that I showed you, the time and the position values. Now to draw the velocity time graph, velocity in meters per second, you'll get a mark for labeling your axes with units. And now remember this time your shape of a velocity time graph is usually a straight line. So it's good to know that your position time graph is usually a parabola shape and your velocity time graph is usually a straight line shape like y equals mx plus c so that you have an idea of what your graph is going to look like. So we know that this ball started off with a negative velocity so I'm going to mark this off as negative 8,032 and then let's follow it first on our rough sketch. Let's follow my arrow to the top. The ball started off with a negative velocity, then reached a velocity of zero, and then fell to the ground at 10 meters per second. So it reaches zero, and then eventually it falls to the ground at 10 meters per second. So I fill 10 there, and on my x-axis, this all happens in 1,84 seconds. So once again, you will get marks for your initial velocity. Follow my ticks marks for the final velocity of 10 and marks for the time, marks for labeling your axes and for the shape. So these are the important things you need to keep in mind when you are plotting your graphs. Now one of the mistakes students make is while studying, students don't always use a ruler, students do not always study in pen, you study on scraps of paper, but it's very important when you do pass paper questions and when you do first body questions that you answer like you would in the exam so that you build good habits you get faster and neater and that way you stand a better chance of excelling in the examination and now for the final question they want us to draw an acceleration versus time graph and remember we chose down as positive so we stick to this even in our graphs throughout the motion the ball was in free fall so the ball, there were no forces acting on the ball except for gravitational force, Fg. So that means the acceleration was constant throughout at 9.8 down. And we took down positive, so it's positive 9,8. And to show constant acceleration, we use a straight line parallel to the x-axis. And we mark this off at 1,84 seconds. 
and we forgot to label our axes. It's acceleration A in meters per second squared and T in seconds. And that is how we draw graphs for vertical projectile motion. Remember to practice. The more you practice, the better you will get. It will start taking shape and practice to use a rough sketch, practice to use direction positive, and you will ace it.